Welcome back to Battleship Systems. Today we're going to be taking a quick look at a three-phase power system for an industrial building and comparing it with the three-phase ship service system of an AC battleship. Please check the errata page in the description. The place I work at is a great example of a three-phase power system, but I'm sure the places you work at, the restaurants you eat at, and the places you shop at also use three-phase power. There are many advantages to using three-phase power, including the ability to use these three-phase induction motors. Battleships have hundreds of these three-phase induction motors, ranging from a quarter horsepower all the way up to 300 horsepower. Now we have to pay a utility company for our power, and for us, that power is delivered through these overhead power lines. There are actually four lines. The three at the top are for each phase of power, A, B, and C, and the one below is a neutral or ground. Battleships use a three-phase floating neutral delta configuration for their power, so voltage only exists between each phase, whereas the power in our power lines are always in a starred configuration. So not only does voltage exist between each phase, but also from each phase to ground. Now the transformer to your house taps into one of these wires to give you single phase power. But for us, we have three phase, so we need three wires. And those three wires run underground over to our pad mount transformer. This is a brand new transformer. The old transformer had to be replaced because it was rusted out and leaking oil. These transformers are filled with a mineral oil to conduct the heat out of the core. This transformer takes the 12,470 volts from the power lines and steps it down to 480 volts, which is a common voltage for a building of this size. And because the transformer is in a star or Y configuration, we can get 277 volts from phase to ground. This is a 1,000 kilovolt amp transformer. That's 250 less than a single ship service turbo generator from a South Dakota class battleship. Yet that's enough to power an entire ship. All you'd have to do is hook it up to shore power and everything on the ship would work fine. As a matter of fact, these are what the museum ships use to power the ships today. Even though the switchboards are rated at 450 volts, Everything generally works fine at 480 volts. Speaking of switchboards, let's go inside and take a look at how this energy is distributed throughout the building. Oh, and by the way, with some adjustments to the auto transformer, this transformer has enough power to run the motors to train the 16-inch turrets. This panel board contains the buses that all the power in the building comes from. In terms of your home, you could think of it as the main breaker panel. Or in terms of a battleship, you could think of it as the switchboard. The switchboard contains many circuit breakers that power feeders. A feeder is a circuit that's powered by a switchboard and usually powers multiple loads. That's a 480 volt feeder panel over there. Let's take a look.
Now this feeder panel is laid out just like a battleship. Behind the scenes, these breakers are tied into CBA, CBA, CBA. And then when you have one with three blocks, it's using all three lines. One of these is labeled office sub panel. Let's take a look and see where that goes. So obviously it's very loud. I'm gonna shut the transformer off, but before I do that, I don't wanna put a lot of load on the breaker, so I'm gonna shut down everything the transformer is supplying. On a battleship, this would be called load shedding. Much better. So this is the sub-panel for this section of the building. It's a 480 volt sub-panel. Now you'll notice there are some breakers that are three size and there's one breaker that is single size. Remember when we talked about how you can use a single phase from one leg of the 480 volt power and get 277 volts? Well, the reason that our lights are still on is because they're powered by 277 volts. So if you look at the breaker going to the transformer, it's 50 amp. Now this is the cable going to the transformer. Let's measure how big it is. It's about one inch. Now the cable coming out of the transformer is bigger. It's about 1.6 inches. And you'll notice the breaker is 100 amp. Now, why is that? Well, a step down transformer works by stepping down the voltage and increasing the amps. So with the greater amps, you need a thicker cable. Let's take a closer look at that transformer. But before we look at that, we have to ask ourselves, what do we need a transformer for? Well, if everything works on 277 volts, technically we wouldn't need one but obviously that's not the case. Now our lighting works on 277 volts. That allows us to get a lot brighter light and allows us to use thinner wires because the lights will use less amps. But obviously our appliances don't work on 277 volts. So that's why we have the transformer. Now the first thing you'll notice about this transformer is that it's just in a single box. On a battleship, there would be a transformer bank with three separate units that you could replace. And you'd be able to take one out to have the open delta configuration. But this transformer uses a shared core, so we don't have that ability. If you look at the nameplate, the primary side is in a delta configuration. That's the same as what a battleship has. Now the secondary side is in a Y configuration, and it gives you 208 volts. That's not what a battleship has at all, but it is what we use because from phase to ground, you will get 115 volts. So behind this panel, the buses are laid out the same way they're on on a battleship, but we're not using them the same way. So you'll see CBA, 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 but whenever we want to tap into 115 volts, you'd see it's just one breaker. Now on a battleship, since we don't have a neutral, we would have to use two of those, it's like C to A or A to B or C to A. Now one of these uses two of those. So that's kind of like your house, that you would get 220 volts, only in our case, you would get 208 volts. Now let's look at a device that uses 480 volts. So we're now in the pump room of the building. So we have to ask, why do we need a pump room? Well, the building code requires us to have sprinklers in our building in case of a fire. And we can't supply the sprinklers with enough pressure with water pressure, so we have to boost that to 90 PSI with this 1500 gallon per minute pump. The reason we have this pump is because the water pressure coming in at the fire hydrant side is about 20 PSI. If there's a fire and one of the sprinkler heads activate, 
20 psi is not enough to reach all the way out to the sprinkler heads and push enough pressure to turn out a fire. That's why this fire pump will activate and increase, and increase the pressure to 90 psi so you can actually put out the fire. So in terms of a battleship, the pump that elevates the 16 inch guns on the battleship is a 60 horsepower motor. This is a 100 horsepower motor and it takes 119 amps to run. By the way, what's the biggest circuit breaker in your home besides the main breaker? Is it the air conditioner, the dryer, or the electric oven? Let us know in the comment section below with the amps and don't forget to like and subscribe. One of the things you'll notice about this motor is that it says it runs on 460 volts, even though we're supplying 480 volts to it. Now why is that? It's the same reason why all the motors and all the danger signs on a battleship say danger 440 volts, but the switchboards themselves operate at 450 volts. So the reason everything is rated lower than the supply voltage is because it's just really hard to control the voltage in a large power distribution system. Remember, wires have resistance themselves. They could have inductive reactants and capacitive reactants. By the time the voltage reaches the motor, it might be down to 470 or 460 volts. And the motor manufacturers know that, so they rate their devices at 460 volts whenever you have 480 volts to give you that leeway. Now, all motors are designed to handle plus or minus 10% of the rated voltage. That's why you could run a 460 volt motor on 480 volts. Now, the motors on the battleship are rated at 440 volts, and they're currently running at 480 volts. There's some advantages to this, and that is the motors will run cooler and they run with more torque than they normally do which is a win-win situation for you as a visitor, not being so hot on the battleship. It's also a win-win situation for the battleship museums. Speaking of battleship museums, if you were thinking of donating to this channel, please instead consider donating to a battleship museum like the Battleship New Jersey. There's a link in the description that'll bring you to the Homeport Alliance for the USS New Jersey homepage where you can donate to the nonprofit organization. Thanks for watching.